what that rule is? Don't touch the butterflies, exactly. Now, any of you guys know why this is really, really important? What do you think? Exactly, they've got scales on their wings. Butterflies' wings are covered with hundreds and hundreds of scales, and those scales on our fingers look like dust. But in order for the butterflies to fly, they've got to be warm, because they are very cold-blooded. And if they lose too many scales, they can't get warm, because the scales are what absorb the light from the sun and allow them to be warm. So if we touch butterflies, eventually they're going to get so cold that they won't be able to fly anymore. So that's the main reason. Does anybody know one more reason that we don't want to touch butterflies? They taste from their feet, exactly. Butterflies have taste buds on their feet. So when they walk on plants and things, they can tell right away if it's the right kind of feet to lay their caterpillar or their egg on. And they can also tell if it's got the right kind of flower to drink. So good job, you guys. You guys are very smart. Stop, you're ready. Okay, I'm gonna help this guy in the bottom first. I'll help him again later. body and I've done this a lot of times so hopefully I won't hurt them. If I have any scales on my hands though I'll let you know at the end. I'm going to start with this guy. This is our owl butterfly. You can tell because of the owl eye spot he's got on the back of the wing here. These guys are one of the only butterflies we actually breed here and you can see their caterpillars right over in that glass container. These butterflies like to fly most at dusk and dawn. So you see them flying more often when it gets kind of dark. And they also love to drink the rotten fruit juice produced from the bananas. Now you guys notice he's got these eye spots at the end of his wing. Do any of you have a guess as to why they've got big eyes on the end? What do you think? because no one really wants to eat food that's staring at you, right? Yeah. And also, predators do go for them. They're going to try and eat their head first. So they're probably going to bite the back of the wing off, and the butterfly will be able to fly away without it. All right, let me see who else I can talk about. Here's a good one. This butterfly is called a long wing, and you can see that his wings are much longer than they are wide. Now, most butterflies don't live as long as this one does. Do any of you know how long butterflies usually live? Any guesses? That's a bit long. It's actually a lot shorter than that. Unfortunately, butterflies don't live a month. Yeah, it's actually much closer to a month. Most of them live for two to four weeks, so usually about one month. And that's just because you don't live very long when all you need is sugar, right? So they just like nectar. Now, this butterfly here has found a way to take pollen and turn it into a liquid and drink it. So this one can live for six months, so they live half a year, six times longer than all the others. And they come in many different colors. You can see this guy's got bright colors on the inside. But they can also be green and black. Normally they're black and a bright color if they're a long way. I want to talk about these two little ones right here. Stay in there. These butterflies here, they look really similar on the outside and that's because they're the same kind of butterfly. But on the inside they look different because one is a male and one is a female. These are called Schumachers. So I'm going to show the male first. This guy is our male. You can see he's got orange spots on his wings. I want to, I want to see These are another one of the butterflies that really love to eat rotten fruits. They don't just drink nectar. So did everybody see him, the male? Okay. Now this is the female. So from the inside, she looks like an entirely different species of butterfly. It's called sexual dimorphism when the male and female look different from each other. And most butterflies don't do this, but the ones that do, it makes it really easy to tell these two. Alright. This butterfly here is called 
called a lace wing, and you can tell because of the beautiful lace pattern at the end of the wing. Now these guys are one of our very territorial butterflies. Did you know butterflies can be territorial? Have you ever seen butterflies do this, circling each other, two of them round and round? That is when they're fighting. And they're trying to play a game of tag, and when the butterfly gets higher than the other one, soars up like that, it means he wins and he gets to keep his territory. This guy is just extremely territorial. This is also the only species of butterfly that we've noticed trying to make the wrong species. They'll go for anybody. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna talk about two more today. That's okay. They are very calm escape artists. This butterfly is a swallowtail, and you can tell that because of the tail he has at the end of his wing. Now those are also there to serve a purpose. Does anyone know why we have tails? How about this? The tails resemble another part of the butterfly's body up near the head. What do they look like? Any guesses? Another head kind of, what, what sticks off their head? Antenna, exactly. So the tails on a swallowtail are meant to mimic the butterfly's antenna. So if this butterfly is sitting still on a tree, a predator like a bird is probably going to think this is a head and is once again going to try and get the back. They may swallow those tails, but the butterfly is going to be able to fly away anyway. And this is our morbid All right, I've got one more butterfly and then we're going to go ahead and let all the rest go. These guys are called golden bird wings. And you can tell they're a little bit larger than some of our other butterflies, especially the one in there. These guys are from Australia, and they're just a really beautiful, beautiful butterfly. They're also on the CITES list, which means that they can't catch them from the wild anymore. They're kind of close, they're very closely protected, so that way they don't go in danger. Go. All right, really fast, before I go ahead and finish and let all the rest of them go, I want to talk about the rainforest for a second, because every butterfly you see today has come from the rainforest. And right now the rainforest is being cut down at an average of one football field per second. So we're losing a vast amount of space for these guys to live, and there's some really easy things we can do here to help. One is always buy your coffee and chocolate from shade-grown sources. So read it on the bag. If it was grown in the shade, it means they leave all the canopy trees out, and that's where the butterflies and most animals live. Another thing is always recycle. Especially recycle your aluminum cans and your cell phones. Cell phone batteries and aluminum cans are both made from minerals that are mined in the rainforest. So if we recycle these, there's more to go around, and we won't have to get so much from that source. Another thing you can do is make sure you don't eat as much fast food, because a lot of times right now, fast food restaurants get their beef from South America. So they're cutting down a lot of the rainforest to grow cattle or raise cattle. So if you make sure that your beef sources are from the U.S., it'll be a lot better for the rainforest as well. And the last thing you can do is come here, because we actually purchase all of our butterflies from butterfly farms around the world. So just find jobs here and all over the rainforest, giving them an alternative to cutting down the trees. So give yourself a hand for helping. All right, let's see how many of these ones we can get to fly off. Keep going. Some of them are stuck. the Butterfly Pavilion.